Hi everyone, uh, first video here. Go check out the About section on my YouTube channel um, and see some of the history. But basically I am completely new to producing music. Um, I've been a bit of a musician, drummer, keyboardist, um, guitarist uh, for a number of years, played live, but I've never actually got into producing music. Um, so here we are, I'm using Ableton 10 um, because I need some of the live stuff in it. Uh, that's why I use Ableton. But um, hopefully what I, what these videos will help you in, in whatever door you're using with the, the, the principles. So of course, the first thing I, after a bit of investigating on the internet, I needed to do was to install Contact um, from Native Access. Uh, Contact Player is the free one, so that's what I'm going with for now. Um, so I tried to install it and it was a total nightmare. Uh, couldn't work out where things needed to go, what I had to go where, what folders and files. Um, and I just went round and round so many times, deleting it, re-downloading it, reinstalling it, deleting it, re-downloading, down, oh, the whole lot, trying to get it to show up in Ableton. Um, so for all the other uh, noobs out there, this is how I did it eventually. Um, I hope it's the same for you. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to uh, your Windows Explorer or uh, if you're on a Mac, your Finder. Um, but get to, uh, so I'm going to use Windows because that's what I use, so Windows Explorer and uh, C Drive Program Files Common Files. Go to that path um, and you should see a, a folder here called VST3 that will have been downloaded by Ableton when you installed Ableton. That's where you're going to store your VST3 plugins, um, not your VST2s, your VST3 plugins. Um, it can be confusing. Um, I found out as to uh, people don't tell you whether a plugin is VST2 or VST3. Uh, we'll come on to that a bit later. But anyway, so VST3 plugins. What you want to do is add these two folders, add two new folders in here. Um, it doesn't matter what you call them, but something sensible. Um, you'll need two, for, one for 32, one for 64. So VST32 bit and VST64 bit. That's where your VST2 plugins are going to go. Now, something that no one tells you, um, is that Ableton 10, I'm on Ableton 10, is 64-bit only. It doesn't have a 32-bit version. So all those videos out there that tell you to go and find your version of Ableton doesn't work in 10 because it does, it, that's not relevant. So Ableton 10 is 64-bit only. However, create both folders, 32 and 64. So that's the first thing you, you want to do is to create those two folders. This video hopefully is in order and it's in order deliberately. Um, so follow through in order. OK, so once you created those um, three folders there, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to Native Instruments on their website, Native Instruments. This is just nativeinstruments.com um, and uh, you scroll all the way down to the bottom. This is where it is currently. It may move. Um, but the first thing you want to do is install this Native Access. Native Access is a, a program that sits on your computer and it kind of handles all your native instrument stuff, including contact. So you want to uh, download uh, either Mac or Windows, download Native Access. Um, you'll have to create an account in order to do that, but that's fine. You're going to have to create an account on pretty much every website you, you get stuff from anyway. So I'm not going to bother um, showing you how to create an account in native instruments. But basically, you want to download Native Access. Um, and once that's downloaded, in fact, actually, before you download that, let me show you something in Native Access. This is Native Access. We're going to come back here in a bit, but I want to show you up here um, your, your account and then preferences. This is the bit that's really confusing. So before you download, just watch this. You've got um, five different locations you have to set when you do Native Access. I'm going to show you this hover over question uh, to um, show you what it says, because you can't find out this information before you do it which is when you need it. Um, so this is why I'm telling you this now. So the download location, um, it says there, the install of the product will be downloaded here. The install will be deleted afterwards. That's fine, not a problem. App location, if your product can be used as a standalone application, it will be saved here. So for example, contact player can be used standalone. Um, so uh, choose that path. The content, right? This is where the actual files of your sounds are saved. Um, and as, as you see there, it says where the big content libraries are saved, we recommend using our external hard drive if possible. Up to you where you save them, but um, uh, as you progress, um, your library is going to get really big um, in terms of size, um, gigabytes, hundreds of gigabytes, um, even terabytes. So um, just make sure you know where that's going to be. So that's the big content libraries. And then here, your VST64 and your VST32 locations. Um, if you get the choice, 
when you download and install native access set these to those ones we just created so those two we created here in c program files common files that's where that 64 and that 32 needs to be saved but if you don't get that choice when you download don't worry come and do it afterwards so I let me i just wanted to show you those now because it will help with the installation of you understanding what needs to go where all right so you're going to install native access um, once you've got native access installed don't worry about what all these things in here do for a second um, and, and stuff the first thing you want to do the very very first thing you want to do if it hasn't given the option already is to do what we just said come up here to the little person logo click choose preferences and make sure your VST64 location and your VST32 location are the same path as those ones we installed earlier so if you haven't done that already do that first before you download any uh, native access programs make sure those are set first that'll save you so much time okay gonna cancel that so then you want to do is you want to come to not installed tab find uh, contact player which will be here um, obviously I've got it installed already so it's not showing here but find it and just click install and it should just download and install it took me a little while to do um, but it got there eventually so just give it time to do what it needs to do once it's installed it will show under your installed products contact six player should be there now remember contact six player is the free version contact six is the the full paid version so for now I'm just going with the free one to get started so contact six player um, and uh, uh, it says player there you can reinstall it if you need to but it should be all good that's contact six player is there okay the other thing it will download when you um, when you install contact six player was it will download the desktop app you remember we had that app location here preferences remember that question mark that said if it's a standalone app it will be saved here see bring about native instruments I'm just going to show you if I minimize all my stuff. Contact player standalone is there. I mean, it's on my desktop because I've put a, a shortcut to it on my desktop. You don't have to, but um, if I just double click that, you'll see it actually opens up contact player um, as, a, as a standalone outside of Ableton. So you can play around with it outside of Ableton if you want. Now, the last thing to do inside of Ableton is you have to come into Ableton Go to options, preferences, and then in where do we want it? Yep, in the plugins. This is so Ableton 10. In the plugins tab, you'll see now you've got to sort where your plugins are. Now, this is one of the really confusing things they don't doesn't make obvious is that your VST2 plugin custom folder, turn that on, browse, and then set that to your C program files common files VST 64 bit folder that we set up earlier so your VST2 plugin folder is that VST 64 we set up earlier um, and then if you if you want to use VST 3s which you're bound to want to do VST 3 plugin system folders turn that on if it's not on already um, and um, that will sort out your uh, system one the one that Ableton downloaded um, and you can if you want um, turn your VST3 plugin custom folder uh, oh no actually no I've just realized sorry that's the bit I did wrong your VST3 plugin custom folder leave that turned off for now you don't have one of those your so that's that's wrong um, that's me trying things from previous I might even just blank that out so you can't see it in the video but so you want to do so you want to do a VST2 plugin custom folder on browse and choose the 64 bit and then also turn the VST folder three folder on. That's all you need to do. So leave that one, that VST3 custom folder off. So that's the bit that really wasn't clear before was that um, your folder you create for 64 bit is for your VST2 plugins. And then hopefully if that's all gone right you should be able to now come to plugins you'll have your vst3 which is your, which is that one your vst3 and then because you set your other one you should have it just calls it vst um, it means vst2 but if i drop down here now 
I can see contact here in my VST uh, folder. And if I just drag contact onto a MIDI track, you see it opens up contact player. Um, and then you can just carry on um, as per usual after that. So hopefully, hopefully that's allowed you to get contact player onto your machine and work in, in Ableton 10. All right, so hopefully that's been all right. Um, any questions, drop them below. I'll try, try and answer them, but remember I'm completely new to this as well, but I'm happy to try things. Um, so yeah, all right, all good. Hopefully that's been all right and I'll see you again next video. See you guys.